The WSN cameras and crew are at HB Whole Field here in Versailles, Ohio, where tonight WSN brings you a matchup of two reigning state champions. The Marion Local Flyers are here. They're 5-0 on the season, and they're here to play the Versailles Tigers, who are 4-1. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Mr. Scott Nurse. Scott, this is a big game in this conference this week. No question about it, and it's going to be Mac football. I guarantee it. It's going to be tough, well-executed, great football tonight. We have our keys to the game tonight that Scott puts together for us. Let's put those up on the screen. Scott, keys to the game. Well, keys to the game tonight, I got three. Number one, line of scrimmage. Seems simple, right? It's not. It's tough. Marion Local averages 329 yards per game in total offense. Versailles, 323 yards per game. That's close. The line of scrimmage is where it's at on both sides of the ball. These are the top two defenses in the MAC. strength versus strength. To win this game, that's where it all starts. Number two. Feature back focus. Joel Garrett from Versailles averages 6.4 yards per carry and Darren Myers at 5.5 yards per carry and has eight touchdowns. They fuel these long sustained scoring drives. The defenses have to limit the big plays from these two backs. Shed your block, make the tackle, get your offense back on the field. And then finally, number three, rise up and be tested. This is like a playoff game. The excellence, the emotion, the execution, you must focus every play. It's the second half of the season. Teams are maturing, so now let's see what we can do. The approach has to be calm, business-like demeanor with high-intensity play. All right, thank you for that, Scott. Versailles has lost to Marion Local the last two years by two points and by one point in overtime. The Tigers think they can win this one. The Flyers got other things in mind. Scott and I have the opening kickoff right after this. You're watching high school football on WSN. We're a minute from kickoff here at HB Whole Field in Versailles. Mary Local comes in. They are 5-0, 3-0 in the conference. Versailles is 4-1. They are 2-1 in the conference. This is the only meeting. Our guru, Ben Reif, put this together for us. The only meeting of state champs that will take place this year in the regular season. Versailles defeated Kirtland a year ago. Mary Local defeated Newark Catholic. And you can see last year and they're now all in division six including carry and in my right to scott i think carry is undefeated playing another undefeated team this evening and i think they've got a big matchup uh, tonight as well but they're all in uh, d6 this year and that's going to make for some very interesting play as the season goes along here's our officials tonight scott you're always the official guy yeah Good. our officials tonight are john derryberry he's the white hat tonight he's the referee and then the umpires bill krug the linesman is rusty krug that's bill's older brother he told me before the game <laughs> and then uh, the line judge is steve oren back judge is charlie gasparati so a great crew veteran crew for sure yeah veteran crew for a big game it is 59 right now it will be close to 50 by the time this one wraps up as we hit the first weekend of fall, and it has certainly turned into a fall-like weather condition. We have Versailles uh, about to kick off to the Marion Local Flyers, and that means that the deep back is number 25 for Marion Local. That's Kyle Adi in the middle. On the far side is Drew Laus, and on the near side, is Braden Pavlaka, and this will go to, oh, bounces through him. Pavlaka has to go chase it down, picks it up, and he's trying to make something out of nothing, and that's going to be Flyers in not very good field position to begin it. Looks like all the way back to about the eight-yard line. There's Tim Goodwin, 3-0 and in this particular Midwest Conference year, coming off a 9-0 and year uh, a game a year ago, uh, averaging... How about that? Giving up 46 points, just 4.6 points per game with a margin of 33.2. Ryan Jones coaches for sales. They have a seven-point loss to New Bremen, the team that Marion Local defeated last year or last week. This is Adi in the I formation. Adi's behind Drew Laus. Tate Hess is under center. They go unbalanced line. Here's pitch. Adi. Adi over the 10 to the 12 and pushes forward. And Mark, you can see Versailles has a really good defense. They're the number two defense in the MAC. Only give up 181 yards per game. You're going to see the good pursuit here they have on this play on the on the pitch that you talked about. But what's interesting to me, 
both of these teams, they're the top one and top two defenses in the MAC, but yet they don't have a single player in the top ten in tackles. They do it by committee, they do it by team, and by doing each each individual job. It's great to watch. Tate Hess is the quarterback. He will run up the middle this time. It gets over the 15 to about the 16-yard line for Tate Hess. Tate has rushed for 206 yards this year and a couple of scores from his quarterback position. He is 30 of 53 with one interception this year. Uh, he's got 475 yards through the air with eight touchdown passes, and his team has put the football to the 16-yard line, and they've got uh, third and about three and a half looking at him. In the backfield now is Darren Meyer. He had a huge week last week and now leads the team in rushing with 316 yards and eight scores. This is Hess picking his way, picking his way, and he's going to fall forward. He's going to be short of the 20-yard line. It's going to be fourth down, or is uh, it? They're moving the chains. Yes, they they're are. Giving it yeah. to him. A little, little late effort by Hess. Our first down sponsor tonight is Betty's Natural Foods. Partner for Health, visit BettysNaturalFoods.com to learn more. The ball gets to the 20-yard line on the run by Tate Hess, and it is a first down. Yeah, we all like to look at the ball in plays yeah. like that, but, man, there was some blocking going on. This is Meyer, sets up behind Tate Hess, and now will shift to his left hip. Hess to throw. Pressure up the middle. He's going to roll right. And keep it himself and just get what he can. Runs out of bounds. Right around the 25-yard line. Let's see what they give him. It's hard for us to see the sideline here. It is so close to the, the team benches. Yeah, and I like his decision-making here. We've seen him a couple times this year, Mark, and I think he does a really nice job of deciding when to throw it and when to pull it, tuck it, and run. And uh, good decision there. The, the, the receivers were well covered. Takes the ball to the 27-yard line. So they are looking at second and a long two. This is Meyer off left tackle, and he gets a first down. Betty's Natural Foods first down on the My run by Meyer. Yeah, and if I was uh, a coach and I needed two yards, I'd give it to Darren Meyer too. Uh, good call here. You see Darren Meyer. He's got uh, 314 yards on the year. Averages 5.5 per carry. He's got eight touchdowns. He had four of those last week and 160 of those yards last week when he became the feature back. Adi is in the uh, Wildcat formation now with Meyer. Hess goes to a slot. This is Lousy and Lousy and, uh, as a wing back. Lousy is going to take the pitch, off, pitch and hand it over the 35-yard line. And he gets to the 37-yard line. Yeah, Laos is another very potent runner. He averages 5.1 yards per carry. He's got a big body, low to the ground, strong, tough runner. 102 yards for him carrying the ball from that uh, wing back position mostly this year. Myers the up back. Adi's behind him. This is Meyer. Short fullback run, and he picks up yardage. Yet another first down. Takes it up to close to the 50. I guess the ball goes down at the 49-yard line. That's the third first down on this particular drive. Right now, it looks like the uh, offensive line from Marion Locals winning the battle, but want to give it a little credit to the Versailles defensive front forward, Dominic Barca, Travis Dirksen, Jared Lyons, and Mitchell Bay. That down four lineman. This is Adi on the short pass, and we're going to get this one called back. Fumbled the football out of bounds, did Kyle Adi. And let's uh, see what the penalty is all about. That hold. From right about the 47 yard line, we're going to step this one back. Yeah, it looked like they got number 34, Laos. To the back to the 30, the hold. 37 it goes. Stays first down. That's well, first down a long way, Mark. Yeah. I can't even do the math that's so far. Well, they need to get to the 41-yard line of Versailles, and they're on their own 37. Trips go left. Now Lyle switches to the left hip, and they're going to run a little option. 
This will be Drew Laos gets the corner, look out, and he's going to get a lot of that yardage back close to the original line of scrimmage. Well, 57, Dominique Barga is a junior, 6'3", 225. He put a hit on Hess. Hess made the decision to pitch, which is a good pitch, and uh, paid the price for it, though. It's like second and about 12. Pretty got good pickup. Got 10 on that one, yep. Hess and Darren Meyer will be in the backfield this time, and Adi is going to quickly switch sides of the formation. He's out here with Holscher. Hest rolls to throw, quick pass, Holscher catches this one, and Holscher's going to get tackled right about that first down, young marker. That's, that's Victor's seventh catch on the year, averages 9.3 per catch. Nice job here of using his hands to catch and receive the ball, looking it all the way in, picks up the first down. That is a first down. That's Tom a big first down, Mark, when it was first and 22. Tenth play of the drive. Here's Meyer off left tackle. And they're just chewing him up inside. Down to the, what, 31-yard line. That's a big pickup on first down. You get a good look there at the Marion local offensive line. You got uh, offensive tackle Jake Top, offensive guard Shane Flack, the center's Mason Rose, the other guard, right guard is Adam Winter, and then the offensive tackle on the end is Kyle Ungren. Second and four. Drew Lass in the backfield again. Now he goes in motion. Adi will keep it himself out of the Wildcat. And Adi goes inside the 25. And that will be a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Yeah, I like that play, Mark. They put Laos in motion, and the outside linebacker went with him. And you see it just opened up a little crease there, just enough for uh, Adi to pick up that first down. To the 20, nice play call. 24-yard line. Scott, they've had the ball half the quarter. You know, this will be play number 12 coming up right here. They've completed one pass. They overcame a penalty. Meyer, Adi in the eye. This is Adi, straight up the middle. Adi's got room to run, and he gets inside the 15. And now we're in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor tonight is Matt's Heating and Cooling. This is your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to Matt's Heating.com to schedule your free estimates. And I really like that number 56. Jake Top was 10 yards downfield. He's a center, 10 yards downfield, blocking Ferrati. First down from the 12. This is Meyer. And this time, a short gain for Darren. Maybe right, second down. Looks like he got almost four on that one. Let's take a look at it again. Notice number 36 is in the backfield now. That's Simon Partington. Six foot, 185 pounder. And he will be the lead blocker again for Meyer. We saw them go to this last week. Yeah, they go to the power eye. He leads block, and then uh, Meyer takes the football right behind him. Kick out block right there by Partington. Down around the five. In fact, it's right on the five-yard line, so they need to get to the two for a first down. Looking at third and three on what will become the 15th play of this drive. And we're seven and a half minutes into the opening quarter already. Yeah, Mark, I was just looking here. I don't think Partington has a carry this year, at least according to the stats, but definitely a significant contributor. Unbalanced left, pitch to Adi. Adi trying to find room and he dives forward. Did he get to the first down marker or not? I think he's gonna be a little short. And that he is. Just outside the two yard line, it's fourth down. And it looks like Coach Goodwin's gonna go for it.
Yeah, my money's on Meyer here. They're lining up in the power yep. with Partington at the yep. fullback. Bet Meyer gets it. Long count. It is Meyer. Lowers his shoulder, and he gets into the end zone. From three yards out, Darren Meyer breaks the plane, gets into the end zone, and his team is on the board first in this one. Well, you talked about it, Mark. This was power football the way down the field. They, they've they used basically almost the whole first quarter. There's only 326 left to put the first six points on the board. Just a, uh, it, It's exactly the way Marion Local would have wanted to start this game. 16 plays in that particular drive. Our touchdowns today. You see, watch the PAT by the, the kicker first as Bills puts that one through. Marion Local is going to take a 7 0 lead. They leave Versailles, 326 to go in the quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's premier community sponsor for the very local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. That was a 90-yard drive that took 8.34 off the clock. They did so in 16 plays. And they threw just one pass out of those 16 plays that they ran, a completion. That was a textbook Marion Local, here we come football. Absolutely. It'll be interesting now to see how Versailles responds. An excellent offense, one of the top rushing offenses in the MAC, averaging over six yards a carry. Clayton Fat Platfoot and Michael Osborne are deep. Bills kicks that one high. And the football will end up in the hands of Michael Osborne. And he has got all kinds of speed. And he breaks it. Yes, he did. Keeps his balance and goes. Finally gets tackled over the 40. Great run back. We were talking to some Versailles people prior to the game, and they said, watch this kid, because he had flat out, has jets in his shoes. Well, he's, a, he's their exciting playmaker, if you will. He averages 22 yards of return on punts, and he gets uh, free here on a kickoff return. An excellent field position. Got to make them feel good about where they're starting out here. Their quarterback is number 30. That's Connor Stonebreaker. He's a 6'8", 205-pound senior. And we'll give you his stat numbers in a moment. Hand off up front and met right about the 45-yard line is Titus Garrett. Titus wears number 44. His brother is in the backfield. He wears number nine. His name is Joel Garrett. Osborne, excuse me, Connor Stonebreaker this year, 42 of 77, one interception, 530 yards through the air and six scores. He's also rushed for 90 yards in TD. He's in the shotgun now, and he's got Joel Garrett on his hip. Watch out for Joel Garrett, 553 yards already this year. Quick pass out. They put it into the hands of the aforementioned Michael Osborne. It's completed for a quick tackle, however. Yeah, that's number 10, Tate Hess, out there on the tackle. Perfect fundamental form tackle right there. That You, you, you can't teach it any better than that. Just a single yard pickup, or a couple of yards, I guess, to the 48. So we're looking at the third down and about five. Let's talk about some numbers. Joel Garrett, 553 rushing yards. That's a score on the ground. Michael Osborne, 157 yards rushing, two TDs, 17 receptions, 262 yards, and four scores. And he is their playmaker. Here's Stonebreaker throws, and it's caught. Reaching up and making the grab with great hands is Michael Osborne. I thought that pass was through over his head. He snatched it out of the air. Yeah, he's their playmaker, no question about it. He wins up and gets here. I thought that Aiden Eifert, number two, had a chance for a pick on that because it was kind of thrown upfield on the side of the uh, receiver where, where the defender could cut in, but completed first down. Betty's natural foods first down. Connor Stonebreaker will take this snap. Here's a quick pass. This is Osborne, and they get to him quickly this time. Right about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think Drew Seitz read that. I really like Stonebreaker, and I like this play call. I like these quick passes to the outside. Get your athletes out there, give them some space, and let them see what they can do. 
Marion Local covered this one well, but uh, you know, sooner or later you, you break one. He didn't quite get back to the original line of scrimmage. Looking at second and about 10. Wide receiver this side of the field is A.J. Griesdorn. He wears number two. Quick pitch, Garrett. Garrett's into flyer territory inside their 40-yard line. Is Joel Garrett. He's the 5'10", 190-pound junior. Titus Garrett, his brother, 6'205", and a senior. Yeah, he picks up about six yards here. He's a third leading rusher in the MAC, averages 6.4 yards a carry. And we're almost to the end of the first quarter. See if we get this play off. Play clock and game clock are pretty synonymous. Stonebreaker looking to the sideline. And I guess he does not run a play. I keep looking back and forth from clock to clock. They're so close. It, it's close. And the quarter comes to an end before the play clock. It's been a very rapid opening quarter. Flyers seven, Tigers on the move. You're watching high school football on WSN. Francis, the replay is made possible by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Well, each team had the football once. Mary Look had it for 8.34. Versailles had it for the rest of the quarter, and they are facing a third and about four to keep possession. And, Mark, this is a great shot. You can see the crowd here. It's packed on both sides of the football field. We got people all around the edge of the field. Uh, I had to park uh, in cold water and walk from here. It, it felt like, I mean, it was. It, it, there's a lot of people here. It's really exciting. Great atmosphere. They've got Osborne in the Wildcat formation. Three receivers right, two left. Osborne will run straight up the middle and pushes down towards the 35-yard line. Yeah, I think he got it. He is really close. Just looking at where the line judge's feet yeah, are, it's going to be close, and they're giving it to him. Yep, yep. move the six. Yet another Betty's Natural Foods first down just inside the 35-yard line. And they will now be running play number seven of this drive. Oh, we're going to measure it. I thought I saw this side with signal, and I guess we're premature in that. Well, you got Orn and Derryberry out there operating the chain, so. It is, first down. Experienced crew there, it is a first down. Right back to the line of scrimmage come the Versailles Tigers. Connor Stonebreaker, quarterback, who is also a very, very talented basketball player. Saw him a couple of times last year. He's got Joel Garrett in the backfield with him. Titus Garrett's in a blocking back position. Hand off. Garrett pushes the pile, pushes the pile. And still pushes the pile, gets inside the 30. Strong run. Joel Garrett. Well, you know, Mark, he's not that big necessarily, but he runs with so much ferocity. I mean, he's a, he just uh, continues to fight for every inch, every yard. He's not going to go down without a fight. I like that in a running back. Picked up five on first down. A couple of receivers are going to go to the far side of the field. That's... Grees Dorn and Osborne. Osborne's in motion. This is Garrett. And this time, not much room to run, perhaps a yard. Yeah, it looked like Aiden Eifert, number 30. Nick Ranley in on the tackle for Marion Local. Well, Garrett, as you can see on this play, gets just inside the 25-yard line. They need to get... There's some hitting going on out there tonight. <laughs> there's some there's some sticking. They need to get about four here on third down, although this may well be four down territory. Play clock is at 10. Stonebreaker to throw. Looks, throws, caught. Nope, knocked loose. Big hit from behind by Meyer. And that is A.J. Greenstorn who's down. And a little shaken up yeah, there. Yeah, he took a shot in the back with that one, didn't he? 
Yeah, I thought uh, like you did. I thought he caught that and then Meyer just laid one on him, drilled him, and uh, he wasn't able to hold on. He was there as was Carter Jones. It appears to be four down territory with 10-17 to go in the half. See Coach Ryan Jones putting a play in. Fourth and four, tenth play of the drive. Look for a quick pass out into the flat here. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Stonebreaker lofts one out, finds Garrett, and Garrett's getting knocked out of bounds. What the, where, where's the position at? It's right in front of the um, Versailles sidelines, and we cannot see that spot. Did he get to the marker? Yeah, I think he did. They're waving the uh, they chains are. on. Yep. So a nice little play. They had two split to the left, and they come back with a little screen to the right. Garrett does the work from there. I think it was that little spin he had at the end and the hop forward that gave him enough for the first down. He needed four. He got five. It's going to be first down now from the 24-yard line. This time Osborne's going to go under center. Stonebreaker's a wide out. Two Garretts are in the backfield. Handoff and pushing the pile forward is Joel Garrett. And they push it down to about the 21 yard line. We'll give them three on that one. Mark, is that the third person we've seen play quarterback tonight? Uh, well, let's see. We had Stonebreaker, Stonebreaker. we had uh, Michael Hoffman, and I think Garrett went under center or went Wildcat once, right? Uh, he did once. They had a Wildcat once. This yep. is Osborne right here. And he's going to stay in that uh, shotgun formation. Stonebreaker becomes the wide out to the bottom of your screen. That's a big, tall body to throw to. And we got movement. They're going to back him up five on the Flyers' touchdown run, the touchdown drive. They were able to overcome a holding penalty. We'll see if Versailles can overcome a... Motion penalty, it takes them back to their own 26 yard, to the flyer 26 yard line. Second about 13, that probably changes the play call then for sure. And Osborne's gonna stay in that quarterback position, shotgun style. Good to see Griesdorn's in the game. He's to wide out the top of your screen after that hit he took a moment ago. Osborne's going to throw it. He's got Stonebreaker in the end zone, and he overthrew him. Close coverage out there by Tate Hess. Well, Michael Osborne's thrown seven yeah. times this year, completed or thrown 15, completed seven of them for 112 yards. He's got a touchdown, puts it out there where really only his receiver has a chance. A nice, well thrown ball. It was a well thrown ball. And a big target who laid out just wasn't quite able to reel it in. Now we're looking at third and about 12. And what do we got? Stonebreaker is headed back into the quarterback position. Osborne goes into the slot on the left. Greenstorm's at the bottom of your screen. Stonebreaker rolls left. Looks and throws, lofts it out. He's got open receiver down here, Michael Osborne. Good oh. scramble play, Connor Stonebreaker. Yeah, I'm not sure if that play was by design. You, you remember Michael Osborne started in the slot on the left side of the field. Stonebreaker goes around to the left side. Everything's covered, comes back to Osborne on the right side of the field here. Excellent play, good result. The drive stays alive. It is first down on about the nine. They are just inside the 10 yard line. They cannot get another first down. It's first and goal from here. Joel Garrett's in the backfield with Stonebreaker. Pitch, Joel Garrett. And he leans forward and maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Still going to be second and about nine. Look at it again. Yeah, it looks like he lost his footing here a little bit. You know, it's that time of the night where just, you know, the dew begins to fall just after dark, just about dark, dusk, and uh, gets a little slippery here for a few minutes. Tried to make a cut with Darren Meyer. Grasping for his ankles, it is second down. This has been, uh, what, a seven and a half minute drive that Versailles has put together. Yeah, they've definitely answered Marion Local's first drive. Here's Osborne, shotgun. He's gonna roll to his left and gets chased. 
Runs away from Darren Meyer. Throws it to the end zone. Touchdown. Stonebreaker. Connor Stonebreaker catches the touchdown pass from Michael Osborne. Well, Osborne does a great job of escaping here. And like I said before, he's their highlight guy. Beautiful pass, great reception by Stonebreaker. We got a chance for a tie game here, Mark. That went 15 plays. PAT guy is Garrett. He is 16 of 19 on the season. Stonebreaker is his holder. And he gets it up, and we're tied at seven. Each team has had a possession. Each team's had a lengthy drive, and we're tied at seven. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our scoreboard is provided by Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Versailles answers. They go 57 yards in 15 plays. Their drive was 7 minutes and 39 seconds. And we are tied at 7. And I, I really love the way Ryan Jones, Coach Jones, used his talent, moved people around different positions, different quarterbacks, and executed down the field. This is Leland Boland. Kickoff dribbles down the middle and hops around. Goes through Adi. Back to chase it down. And much like the opening kickoff, Flyers are going to be pinned deep. Seven forty-one to go here, opening half. This will be the second possession of the football game for Marion Local. And once again, they are going to be deep in their own territory as they've had kickoff return issues tonight. Yeah, I don't know whether he practiced that or what, with like a knuckleball or something. But Adi's had trouble with both of those. Yeah, and uh, back to the 12-yard line. Their first drive started inside the 10. We got Hess in the backfield. Like Partington goes up into the blocking back position. Audie's in motion. And this is a handoff to Meyer. Darren Meyer. Yeah, that's a tough, tough play to defend. Meyer picks up about six or seven yards here. It's almost a triple option. He could give that to Adi. He could pull it and keep it himself, Hess. But instead, he gives it to Meyer. Meyer picks up about six or seven yards there. Ball's on the 17-yard line. It is second. Four-plus yards to go. This is Adi. On the direct snap. You know, Mark, I said it last week when we were at Marion Local. I really like this that offensive set where they have Adi in the wildcat position because it really effectively gives you an extra blocker. Typically, the quarterback will hand off and then become sort of uh, useless in the execution of the play. In this case, he, you got an extra blocker out there, take the direct snap and get what you can get. They decided that was a first down as he got just over the 22-yard liner. First down, sponsored by his Betty's Natural Foods. Officials took a long look at that one, decided not to measure it, and instead credited the first down. There's Hess in the backfield, along with, looks like he shifts Partington to his right. Hess will look to throw. Quick pass. That's caught. And will that be yet another first down? I think it is. And looking to see what he got. He got number 20, who is Holsher. That also becomes a first down as the football gets out to the 34-yard line. That's an 11-yard pickup. Yeah, and that's Holsher's eighth catch on the year. He had one earlier tonight on the first drive. This is Adi in the backfield along with Meyer. Hess is in the slot. This is Meyer, and he rumbles forward over the 35-yard line to about the 37, pickup of three. Man, that front four for Versailles is tough. 
They hold their own, they shed the blocks, they make the tackles, they make it tough for those running backs from Marion Local. Second and seven. High formation this time. Myers the up back, and he gets over the 40. A tough yardage up the middle. Yeah, it looks like number 60, Davion Runner. Looking at third and about four. Two receivers go to the left. Hess will roll to his left and look. Nobody open. Looks, 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 and throws it and throws it away. The defense that time. Flyers are going to go to fourth down. The punter is Aiden Eifert. He averages just under 38 yards per punt. Yeah, and I thought Hess almost, or Tate almost stepped out of bounds here. You see him backing up, got close. So referee John Derryberry come over to get a close look at it. So Versailles holds defensively. Here's Eifert's, Eifert's, or, uh, Eifert's punt, and that's going to be a good one. It's going to hit and check up right about the 12-yard line. You know what I say, Mark. Right. You know what that. Yeah, I know. That's your that's your wedge shot. That's right? my wedge shot. Yeah. That's, I, that's what I want to do every time. I know what that is. Though. That's a 48-yard punt, and Versailles is back on about their own 12-yard line. Well, they will begin just their second possession of the opening half. You know, that's what you see these really good teams like both of these on the field tonight do. They execute. All phases of the game, special teams, um, you know, offense, defense, and you see there on the punt, 48-yard punt, puts for sales at about the 10, 11-yard line. Stonebreaker is in the backfield. He, along with Joel Garrett. This will be Joel Garrett. Up the middle, nice run, Garrett, and more. He has to be dragged down by Carter Jones. Quick hitter off the left side, creates a first down. Well, give credit to that Versailles offensive line. They definitely open up the hole. That's Jared Lyons at left tackle, uh, Lucas Stammen at left guard, Andrew Clark at center, Zach Cornanier at right guard, and Alex Gilmore at the right tackle. And then you got Ethan Stover out there at tight end. They definitely opened up a hole 16, for Garrett. 16 yard pickup, it's a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Man in motion, handoff. This is Michael Osborne trying to get the corner. He got a few yards on that one. Neither team has called a timeout as we're down to four minutes to go in the opening half. Well, it's been excellent football. It's been yeah. mostly running the football and the passes they have thrown. Most of them have been completed, so very little clock stoppage tonight. To the 32-yard line was the pickup. About three and a half yards on first down. Here we go, second down. Stonebreaker looks to the sideline. Greenstorms to the top of his screen and Titus Garrett switches sides and goes in motion. Here's Garrett. This is Joel Garrett. And yeah, and he was tackled by Aiden Eifert here, and, and, and he, uh, from a linebacker position, attacks the ball carrier, but Eifert wins this battle. He continues on about two extra yards after the contact. Well, we're going to measure this one or just make it third down. They're going to bring the sticks in. It is just short of the 38-yard line, so let's see how this plays out. This is a dead ball timeout by our officials. Our timeouts today are sponsored by Kneecamp Farm Market. Your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 127. They're eight miles south of Salina. And we're going to stretch it out and see. And it is a first down. For sales, we'll keep the football for three or four more plays minimum. 3.26 to go before half. Mark, we, we've had two oh. uh, measurements already yeah. this half. You know, that's a bit unusual. Could have had a third and yeah. chose not to. What we do have is Versailles on the move, and would they like to take a lead going into half? 
Well, at 320, they got to pick up the intensity here a little bit. Stonebreaker, quick out, caught. A.J. Griesdorn. Did he pick up a first down? As we're going to move it forward, it looks like the signal was first down, and it is. Another Betty's Natural Food first down. Had a bunch of those by both teams in the opening half. Yeah, that's Greenstorm's second catch on the year. 6'2", 175-pound junior. Stonebreaker has Joel Garrett to his right hip. Osborne in motion. This is Garrett. Joel Garrett into flyer territory and more. Stiff arms one and falls forward. Nice run. To the flyer 40 yard line. First down, it's a pickup of 12. Yeah, and you're gonna see here after contact, he, he uses his left arm and sends Carter Jones to the ground. Yeah. Picks up about seven or eight more yards. Could have had a lot more, but just couldn't keep his balance. There's your 190 pound running back. He just shoved his way forward for another first down inside the 40 to the 39 yard line, actually. Ferocious runner. It's Titus Garrett switching sides of the formation. And Joel Garrett runs behind him, and this time they get him. Looks like he might have got two to the 37. This offensive line, Alex Gilmore wears 52. He's the right tackle. Zach Cordonier is the right guard. He wears 55. The left guard is Lucas Stallman. He wears 58. The center is Andrew Clark. He wears number 78. And Jared Lyons is a left tackle. He wears 79. They are having a good half. Strombaker looks under pressure. First guy misses. Here throws, and he throws it out of bounds. Pressure came that time from Nick Randley. Stonebreaker does a good job just getting it out of bounds. Yeah, the good throw away there. He took a hit. He did. It, 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 it always looks worse to me when a guy, get, you know, is tall like that and gets hit right around the knees. But fortunate to get rid of the football there. Third and eight from the 37-yard line of Marion Local. Fire defensive cried comes to life, and when they came to life, so did Versailles, offensive side. Two receivers go each way. We're two by two. Here's Stonebreaker to throw. Blitz steps up, throws it over the middle, and it's caught. He put the ball right into the hands of Peyton Platfoot. And that will be another first down. Yeah, and Peyton does a really nice job of holding on here. You see him bobble it a little bit. He had a defender draped all over him there. That's number five, Nate Busher. And he's able to hold on to it. Drive stays alive. To the 27 yard line, first down. Stonebreaker's gonna roll right and keep and step out of bounds. Picks up about a yard, but maybe maybe not. It's gonna be close there, maybe no gain at all, but uh, the clock does stop, gives him a chance to regroup a little bit here. Well, they actually, See, he lost a yard. The official down box is back closer to the 30-yard line, so he lost about two and a half. 128 to go. Stonebreaker. He's got Titus Garrett beside him. Throws it over the middle and throws it through the arms of Ethan Stover. Well, that was a big play. Stover had grass in front of him, too. He could have uh, taken that ball possibly into the end zone. Well-thrown football. Ethan Stover's the tight end at 5'10", 185, and just couldn't quite snare that particular pass. Now we're looking at third and 12 on the 11th play of this drive. They've had to put football for three minutes and 24 seconds and have moved it from their own 12-yard line. Yeah, and I think given the time on the clock, Mark, this is probably four down territory. They're not going to punt it here. Trips left. Stonebreaker looks, looks, 
And throws it to the end zone, and it is intercepted. Picked off. Tate Picked Hess. off in the end zone. Hess got it. Watch it again. Watch the battle in the end zone. Hess had great position. Tate Hess listed at 6-2. So is A.J. Greenstorm, but Hess had a little better position. We have our first turnover of the half, and the Flyers take over with 1.14 to go, and they have all of their timeouts remaining. The football's on the 20. Well, they're plus four coming into the game, so they're plus five now. Um, you know, it's, it, Hess had great position there. If you're going to miss when you're throwing it in the end zone, you want to miss deep or to the out-of-bounds side. You don't want to miss short. The pass was a little bit short. Hess was there. That's just the second INT thrown this year by Connor Stonebreaker. Hess throws it out and throws it off of Adi's hands. A little bit too hot. Well thrown ball. Second down, 68 seconds to go. For sales, gets the football first in half number two. Second and 10 with a minute on the clock. I don't know if you want to throw it here or, or run the timeout. It would be interesting to see what Tim, Coach Goodwin does. Came out pretty aggressive. He's got Darren Meyer behind Hess. Nice shifts to his left hip. Pressure coming. Hess steps out and is going to keep it. Hess heads for the sidelines. Got first down and more. Tate Hess is loose up the sideline, and he's got more wheels than I thought he had. Scott, he turned it on there. He does, and that was really close to a, a block in the back here as Hess comes around the corner. You're going to see coming into your picture at the left here a block that was close, but uh, he gets the head in front of the body, so it's a legal block, and Hess has got wheels. He's up the sideline. Absolutely. A 35-yard pickup takes the ball into Tiger territory at the 45. They have a good field goal kicker in Carson Bills. Yes, they do. Got out of bounds, that stopped the clock. Here's Meyer, and he's tripped up and still stumbles forward. Great balance. And first time out of the half, we'll go to Marion Local. Just 48.3 to go, our break. You're watching high school football, WOSN. That was our first time out of the opening half. Our timeouts that are sponsored by Kneecamp Farm Market is your one-stop shop since 1998 on State Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. Very local calls their first time out. Meyer ran that one inside the 40 to the 39, so he picked up six. We saw Carson Bills great to range with his field goal last week. He made a 35-yarder. They would need to get down to around the 18 or so to get in that range, but he had a lot of range when he kicked that one, Scott. So. Well, he, yeah, he's an excellent kicker and uh, one of the one of the better kickers I've seen in the area for quite a while. He he kicks field goals. His kickoffs typically go inside the five yard line with a lot of hang time. I mean, he's an excellent kicker. So second and four. Yes, will step to throw. And runs out of room, and the ball's loose. And Versailles hops on it right at midfield. Let's see who picked up that fumble on the bottom of the pile, Stonebreaker. So each team has turned it over here in the opening half. Now let's see what Versailles chooses to do. They will get to football just across midfield. They have all their timeouts remaining, and there's just over 40 seconds to go. Well, an irony of the football game, right? Stonebreaker throws the INT. He gets the fumble recovery, gets the ball back. So Versailles has a chance here with 40 seconds. Ball's on the 49-yard line. The receivers go two by two. Stonebreaker's got a good arm. He's got some playmakers, too. Osborne's out here. I watched him run that route, and that was perfect. Well, let me tell you, I watched Stonebreaker, and he threw the ball perfectly on the run, too. He's got an arm. That ball was on a rope. Quickly they set up down to the 35-yard line, pick up a 14. And I like this play design. They roll Stonebreaker out. It shortens that pass, gives it a higher degree of, uh, you know, 
likelihood that it will be completed. I like that. For Sales was not able to get the play in quickly enough. The clock had started after the first down. They take a timeout. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. You know, they're not quite in the red zone yet, Mark, but I would say just watching Stonebreaker, he can reach the end zone if he decides to throw it there. Well, right now they've got uh, Osborne Os at, at quarterback position, and Stonebreaker is in the slot on the right side, two by two with the receivers. Here's Osborne, and we got flags everywhere. Motion penalty. Must have been pretty egregious because <laughs> they were throwing them all over the place. Back five we go. They overcame a five-yard penalty on their touchdown drive and see if they do so here. I think they want the clock reset, don't they? That was a dead ball penalty. And we're trying to get it back. Is it a 26? I believe is where it yeah, should it be. It was 26 yep. when the timeout took place. Stonebreaker will leave, and he'll be replaced by Peyton Platfoot. Yeah, I don't think the officials no. are mic'd up. Back to 26, it does go. Michael Osborne is the quarterback. And he has Joel Garrett beside him, and they're going to roll left and throw. And that one goes through the hands of Peyton Platfoot. And we'll go to second down. That took uh, almost six seconds to run. He was trying to twist his body around and just couldn't quite get twisted around to make a play on it. Yeah, he was really well covered, very well covered in that. And he tried to uh, twist back and come back to the football, which is, you know, the right thing to do. Just wasn't able to hold on to the football. Michael Osborne stays at quarterback. Trips left this time. Osborne will step up to run, and they get him in the backfield. He's able to get back to the 40, but that's it. And that will be a Versailles timeout with 14.6 to go. And we will go to, to what, third down, I believe. Yeah, third and about 15 here. Ball is right at the 40, so they made it a no-gain situation on that particular play. TV 44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Would you donate $40 to thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in this region? Donate online to WTLW.com backslash donate or call 419-339-4444. You see it here, the uh, AP Football State Poll Division yep. 3, Wapakoneta is up there at 15, Division 4, Van Wert. Number six, Division Five, Coldwater. Number two, and Division Six, Marion Local, is number one. Number three is Cary, and number five, Versailles. So we've got one and five here yep. tonight. And then in seven, you got New Bremen, Antwerp, Arlington, Macomb, after, and After Waynesville we goes. saw New Bremen last week in the second half, and as well as they played as physical, I told a lot of people afterwards, you do not want to play New Bremen in the playoffs. Yeah. In, in D7, well, they are going to be a tough out. I have a feeling, Mark, we're going to see several local teams you know, at the state. It's third and 15. Osborne looks, looks, throws it deep. And did Hess pick off another one? Yes, he did. I'm waiting for the call, but I think he got one up and got that one. He went from his free safety spot in a long way. Tate Hess went and snatched that one out of the air and with 7.9 seconds to go, we get our second turnover and Mary Local will get the football back. Second for sales turnover. Let's take a look at it again. Well thrown ball by uh, Michael Hoffman here. But Hess has great position, just kind of playing center field from that safety yep. position. And they're, they're in cover two zone. He reads it, floats over to that side, just picks it. Football's uh, inside the, the, the 10. I would be surprised yeah. if they don't just uh, run the football or maybe even take a knee here. And that's what the appears to be. There it is. 
Each team goes on long touchdown drives on their first possession. Each team scores, each team makes the extra point, and then we get shut out after that. We will go to the second half with a score tied at seven. It'll be for sales football. When we come back, you're watching high school football on WOSN. And we're back at whole field here in Versailles. Our halftime score, we're tied at seven. Very local took the opening kickoff. They went 90 yards in 16 plays. They took eight minutes and 34 seconds off the clock. Versailles answered. They went, uh, let me see here, 57 yards. Took them 15 plays, and they took 739 off the clock. And that tied it up at seven. Then each team had a... Uh, interception by Tate Hess, a fumble by Hess that was recovered by Stonebreaker, then another interception by Hess, and that brought the first half to an end. So you were saying, Scott, you were thinking about both teams here at halftime. What are you thinking? Yeah, and I'm thinking if you're uh, Versailles, I, I think they played a good first half. I think the key is for them is they got to play mistake-free in the second half. They can't have any more turnovers. They've had two already in the game. One was really just sort of a desperation heave at the end of the half, but two turnovers nonetheless. And if you're Marion Local, I think, you know, their mentality is, their expectation is to win. So um, if you're Versailles, you've got to guard against that. You, you've got to not allow them uh, to have the big play that, that allows them to get that momentum and that mental mindset going into the third and fourth quarter. You know, we talked about uh, in the pregame, you know, who, who has a kind of a mental edge and one of the things you think about, well, Versailles has been close. They lost by two last year. They lost in overtime the year before. They've won a state championship. They know how to get to, to this particular point. But likewise, they have not defeated Marion Local since 2012. So they, they still have to figure out a way to get over the hump and, and get that victory. They've been close. And, and we we're going to see how this second half plays out as we're just a few seconds away from that taking place. Versailles will get to football first. And, you know, both teams have been kind of similar, I think, offensively. They've been, they both have run the football. They've had a, a running back step in and play quarterback. They've, they've done a lot of things in a very similar manner, and we're tied at seven. Well, and I'm not surprised. You know, Marion has played Versailles twice in, in the last two years, and, and yep. they won by a combined three points. So, you know, you, you, my expectation was it was going to be close. Kickoff by Marion Local will be done by Carson Bills. And the deep will be Peyton Platfoot. He wears number 11 and the very dangerous number 17, Michael Osborne. By the way, Marion Local has a 21-game winning streak, the longest currently in the state of Ohio. And it is in jeopardy at this point, uh, I would say. The last loss was to New Bremen, who went on to win a state championship. It was a playoff loss. Here's a kickoff going to go high to Platfoot. And Platfoot's got good yardage and will be knocked down right about the 30-yard line, and we will go to second-half action. Connor Stonebreaker has spent a lot of time at quarterback. He's also been a whiteout at times today. They're very dangerous. Michael Osborne wears number 17. The running backs have been uh, number 9. That's Joel Garrett, and then kind of the blocking back has been Titus Garrett. He wears number 44. And the football is right on the 30-yard line. Receivers. Two to the right, one to the left. Slot back to the left. Stonebreaker changing the play, perhaps. Flyers send them. And met at the line of scrimmage is Joel Garrett. Not much room for Joel on that run. In fact, they're going to put it down to the 31 and give him just a yard. Well, Mark, uh, just to give you an idea, this year, Marion Local has outscored their opponents in the first quarter 55 to nothing. In the second quarter, 80 to 10. Typically, they're scoring points and they're blowing people out early already this year. They only scored seven in the first half. So it would be very interesting for me to see what Tim Goodwin dials up at halftime in response to the Don't break her to throw. Platfoot catches the ball over the middle. That will be a first down, a Betty's Natural Foods first down. He zipped that one through there to the 46-yard line and picked up 15. Yeah, you couldn't throw the ball more perfect than this. It's perfect right, right in stride, exactly where it needs to be. I like to play. Platfoot had a couple of balls that uh, he would have, could have, should have caught, and he got his hands on that one, had some smoke behind it. Stonebreaker heads to the sideline. That means that Michael Osborne moves into the quarterback position, the 5'11 junior. Titus Garrett beside him. Oswald will run up the middle, and he goes down after a yard gain. Yeah, not much going there. 
Osborne uh, coming into tonight had rushed for 157 yards and a couple of scores. He'd caught 17 balls for 262 yards and four scores. Well, Marion Local is the number one team in the MAC against the rush. They give up 2.47 yards per attempt. So um, that's a pretty tough defense to run against. They have been the number one defense in the conference all year long. And what do we got? Official is directing number seven, Ethan Stover, off the field. He will be replaced by Ethan Weber, who wears 41, goes to the tight end position. Stonebreaker looks to his coach. Here's Garrett. Pushes the pile to about the 49-yard line. That'd be a pickup of a couple for him. Boy, he advances through contact almost every time he runs a football. You see him pick up about two more yards after contact. Football is just shy of the 50, and the Flyer defensive fans come to life on the far side of the field. They want to get a stop and get the ball into the hands of their offense. Trips to the right, single receiver left. Blitz coming. Stonebreaker rolls out and throws it over the middle, and he missed his receiver that time. He was looking for Michael Osborne and missed him. You know, we talked about in the first half that uh, Aiden Eifer doesn't get to punt very often, averages 37.8. Uh, well, in the punt now is A.J. Greensdorn, and he has punted seven times in five football games. He also averages 37 yards per punt. 6'2", 175-pound junior. These two teams have had offenses that have been so successful. Very talented punters rarely get on the field. Deep is Ryan Holman. No, not Ryan Holman, Nathan Busher. And Adi, kick headed towards Busher, and tracks it down right inside the 20, and tripped up. Nice special teams play. Guess who that was? That was Joel Garrett, the running back. Well, A.J. Greestorn set this up with a beautiful punt. He averages 37 yards a punt, puts it kind of in the corner there, and allows uh, the defense to sort of you know, sort of block in there, Nate well, Busher, and they're able to uh, pin him pretty deep. But once again, Marion Local starts deep in their own territory. That's a good point when you say once again. The first half, they had the ball four times. They started on their 10, on their own 12, on the 20, and the last play of the half on their own seven. They're on their 10 this time. Their quarterback is Tate Hess. He puts Adi in motion. Quick pitch to Adi. Cuts it up inside. Kyle Adi. And Kyle Adi gets up over the 25-yard line. Well, and that was a forward pass, so yep. that's considered a pass. It is. First down. Betty's Natural Foods first down. The football gets out to, what are they at there, uh, 27, I guess? Yeah, really nice job by Darren Meyer, lead blocking out there. Scoreboard says 28-yard line. We can go with that, I guess. It's first down. in motion. This is Meyer running off the right side, and he's got no room to run. On the bottom of the pile would be 53, Michael Bay. But he had a lot of help from some other orange jerseys right there. Yeah, there wasn't much there for Darren Meyer. He was hit early before he really had a chance to get going. Loss of one. You know, I think it's great tonight. We have such a huge crowd out here on both sides of the football. The communities are turning out for their their teams and support, and it's uh, really good to see. Two receivers go to the left for Tate Hess. This is Adi in motion again. And quick pass out, Busher, catch. One-on-one -on -one out here, makes the first guy miss. Busher with a first down. Well, Mark, I like that play, as you know. I like that play a lot where you get a player out in, you know, a quick pass out into the flat, and you allow an athlete like Busher to have a one-on-one -on -one battle here, and he wins this for about 10 or 12 yards, pick up a first down. Before tonight, he had 10 receptions, 188 yards, and a couple of scores. He is a dangerous man when he gets the football out there. That picks up 13 to the 39, it's first down. Partington is in the backfield now. He wears number 36, 
Darren Myers behind him. This is a counter play to Adi. Adi runs through the first tackle. Kyle Adi up the sideline where he is eventually brought down by number 57. That's Dominic Bargy. Yeah, number 17, uh, Michael Osborne helped on the tackle too. You see uh, Adi gets through that first would-be tackler. First down for him to the 44 of Versailles. Darren Meyer, the up back, and he will fall forward for a yard or so. And Mark, this is really only Marion Local's fourth possession of the right. game because the, the, the one they had right before the half was a one play kneel down. Sure. So they really, this is the fourth possession in this game. It's gone quick. And, uh, and that's where I say mistake free football right now is at a premium because of very few possessions by both teams. Darren Meyer picked up a yard on first down. It is second and nine. Meyer's in the backfield behind Partington. And Tate Hess goes under center. And uh, Meyer uh, just got anxious, didn't he? Yeah, he was leaning. He was up on his toes as yeah. long as he could, and then uh, he took a little step there. Take it back to the 48-yard line on a five-yard penalty. Just so anxious to make a play that he... Well, and you knew he was yeah. getting the ball. They right. had all 11 guys in the box, but two tight end with power. They had Partington up there blocking for him. It was coming up the middle. Goes back now to second and about to 13, 14. Still in the power eye. Yeah, same formation. And Hess will keep this time. Steps inside a tackler and then will fall forward to the 45. So Hess picks up about three. To the 45 yard line. Yeah, not much going there. It looked like uh, third and about 11. Yeah, about a one-yard gain, maybe. Flyers trying to keep this drive alive. Victor Holscher. Look for Adi in the flat along here. With yeah, here's Adi out here, along with Holscher. This is Adi on the swing on a screen pass. Adi and gets knocked down inside the 40. He did not get the first down. What a good play there by uh, looks like number 12 for Versailles. That, that is uh, Owen Mendenhall. And if he doesn't yeah. make that tackle, I think Adi cuts to the outside. He was, uh, there was a lot of grass in front of him. Could There's a, a decision play. time. It's on the 39. They need about five for a first down. And looks like coach says we're going to go for this one. Hess goes up under center. Meyer and Adi in the backfield in the eye. Corners are playing soft. And trying to draw off. Nope, they run a play. Here's Hess. Rolling right, being chased, throws. It's caught. He put the ball into the hands of number 33, Connor Bruns, his tight end. Well, it was a nice little drag play from the, from the left side. Connor Bruns is just dragging after the other receivers had cleared. Beautiful pass, pick up the first down. I like the play call a lot. 12 yard pickup, that becomes a Betty's Natural Foods first down to the 27 yard line to keep the drive alive. Kind of a surprise they don't use Connor Bruns a lot to catch the football. Here's Hess gonna run to his left and not this time. Hess is lucky to get uh, anything. Well, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. What a hit in the backfield. Is that 58 who got there first, Lucas Stallman? And yeah, this, this, it was. Look yeah, at that. This play was blown up early. Yes, it was. So the ball goes back to the 30-yard line. And here we go. Play number 10 of the drive, but this it looks like a second and 13. Meyer heads to the sideline. Brings Drew Laws into the backfield. He wears number 34 behind Hess. Just like the first quarter, they've used up almost the whole quarter. And now to his right. Here's Hess on the option and steps inside, keeps it himself, and dives down to about the 26 yard line. Yeah, really good job of assignment football here by Versailles. You see on the outside, they've got somebody for the pitch, and they've got somebody inside for the quarterback and they were able to stop it for a short game. 
It is third and nine now from the 26-yard line. They have proven before it's four down territory, although they do have that good leg in Carson Bills. I was going to say, they're pretty yeah. close to his range. Adi's in the backfield. Hess is in the slot. This will be Meyer. Meyer darts inside. First down. Well, just a nice power play here. Yeah, was it ever. Off tackle. See number 56 got a good block in there. That's the center, Jake Top. Yeah, he's been blocking well all night for sure. 10-yard pickup to the 16. That's back at quarterback again. Dottie in motion. This is Meyer. Meyer gets inside the 15 to perhaps the 13. Let's pick up a three on first down. Second and seven. Well, you are correct, Scott. They got the football with 9.18 to go. And they are approaching a seven-minute drive. Hess puts Adi in motion. Hess looks. Busher on the far side. Catches it. Still in bounds. And, and Busher and, with a catch. Yeah, and that plays open, Mark. They, they've had uh, a couple times now where the guys that are split out, their receivers are getting a big cushion from the corners out there. Hess just takes about a five-yard uh, little curl route, just goes out, turns around, the football's there. Nice pickup. Eight-yard pickup to the five. It is first and goal from there. Partington's in the backfield. Look for Meyer. He will be the road grader in front of Meyer. And Meyer pushes to the end zone. Did he get there? He did not. He's close. He really is. Ball is just uh, outside of the goal line. We'll call it the one. Well, he runs so low to the ground. I mean, he's got all his leverage and all his momentum going forward. 5'10", 195 pounds, senior. Defensive player a year ago in the MAC. Gets a lot of carries here the last couple of weeks. Got Partington in front of him again. Look for the same play, the other side. Other side, and in. Meyer into the end zone goes Darren Meyer. Well, you don't have to be fancy if you're good, right? And uh, that front line for Marion Local blocking well. Partington open up in a hole, and Meyer just follows him into the end zone. Darren Meyer's second touchdown run of the evening. That caps off a lengthy drive. That's 10 on the year for him. Brings in Carson Bills to do the PAT work. Let's see if he kicks it to the uh, concession stand roof. Let's kick, kick it in the window out there, knock a few cokes over. <laughs> Oh, got a guy off size now. That will give Coach Goobin an option to go for two, and he's sending the bodies in right now. So they're going to be a yard and a half out. So they're going to go for two. Well, this is a big play, Mark. Is. The yes, way this game is, is going, this a one-point differential could be significant. Plus or minus. Yeah, and guess what? Here's Partington and Meyer again yeah, on the two-point conversion. Right side. Meyer, and he slipped and dove. Did he get there? He did not. He was short. He slipped trying to get to the end zone, and it's going to be made a six-point game. Here it is again. Yeah, I think he would have been in easy right there. You can see the hole, but his knee does go down and his shoulders hit the ground before he slid across the line. It's the Flyers 13, it's the Tigers 7, 142 to go in the third. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's sister replay is made possible by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. 13-7, that was a seven minute and 36 second drive. And again, they went 90 yards. We'll try to show you that PAT attempt again here after the kickoff by Carson Bills. You'll see exactly what happened on that particular play, and Scott will walk you through it after Bills' kickoff here. 
Pops it up in the air. It's going to come down at about the 10 yard line, 12 yard line. And run right up the middle. Big gain on the kickoff that time. That was Platfoot. Let's take a look at that extra point attempt. Yeah, Platfoot's had two nice returns. You'll see here Meyer on this uh, on this replay. He slips, but his knee never hits the ground. We had another angle right here. You can see his elbow is down just short of the goal line with the football there. Knees never hit the ground. So great call by the officials. He was definitely short of the goal line. 137 to go in the third. Let's see if Versailles has an answer on their second possession of half number two. PAT situations can be so important in tight games like this one. Here's Connor Stonebreaker. And he will look. Wanted to throw it out here to Osborne and could not. Just tucked it himself and tried to get something. And Nate Busher had excellent coverage yeah. on Osborne. He perhaps got a yard to the 38, second and nine. Yeah, Stonebreaker took a look out here. I tell you, Nate, Nate Busher is excellent on the offensive side of the football, but he's a really good defensive back. Very experienced, smart player. Physical. 5'11", 170 pounds, senior. Trips right, single receiver left. Flyers look like they want to come, but they're going to drop into coverage. Here's Platfoot. Catches it behind the line of scrimmage. Good tackle by Darren Meyer. Yeah, I like the play. There was some open field in the middle of that, that offense right there, and you'll see Darren Meyer with an excellent tackle. Good thing he made that. There was some space to run there. Yes to the 41-yard line. They need to get to the 47 for a first down. And they do need to run a play here. Yeah, this is a big play, Mark, yeah. third and seven. Trips left this time. A.J. Greenshorn's at the bottom of your screen. Here comes the Flyers. And they get oh. pressure and they get him. Knocked down in the backfield by the uh, number 56, Jake Topp. Well, we talked about Jake Topp a couple times offensively. He's been doing a great job at the center and blocking, but here he gets through this tough Versailles line and bang, puts the hit right on Stonebreaker, and he's going down. Eight-yard loss back to the 33, but that brings the third quarter to an end. We played 36 minutes. We've got 12 to go here in the fourth. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's premier community sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. Here's the putt away by Griesdorn. It will bounce into the hands of a Kyle Adi. And Kyle Adi will, a big flag comes in. Which official threw that flag? That guy's got an arm. He does have an arm. <laughs> big wing. Let's see what the call is. Marion Local has the football right about their own 40 after the punt. I think that was Bill Krug threw that flag in from did, about did he, 30 yards away. Did his arm come out of the socket? or yeah. going to be a block in the back, and Marion Local will take over with 11.47 to go, and they would like to do what they did the last time, which was go a total of, uh, what, uh, 14 plays and take uh, 7.30 six off the clock and score, and they would love to do that again. Well, they went 90 yards last yep. series. This series, uh, they they only hit, would have to go 73, but. Both of their touchdown drives have been 90 yards, and they've been a combined 30 plays. Versailles has got something to say about it, though. Audie comes out wide. This is Meyer. Meyer rumbles up the middle and goes over the 35-yard line. Mark, and I think what we've seen from Marion Local in the past, or at least the recent past, is you get to this point in the game, they've got a, a lead, um, you're going to see a heavy dose of, of Darren Meyer. I mean, a heavy dose of the run game, keep the clock moving, keep the chains moving if they can. Meyer's a tough runner. It's second and three. It's a, the ball's on the 36-yard line. As Adi has gone into the quarterback position, he will hand off to Meyer, and he will be just short of the first down. It's third and about one here. Ball's on the 37-yard line. 
for sales. Need would love to get a stop. Force, force a punt by Aiden Eifert. Well, and you, you yeah. got the look here. Partington with Meyer. Yep, Meyer, Meyer in the background. First down, yardage and more. It's a Betty's Natural Foods first down. Three consecutive runs. Darren Meyer takes the ball to the 42-yard line. Well, you know that play's coming when you see Partington back there. It's either going to be left side or right side. and uh, But, you know, knowing it and being able to stop it, two different things. Adam Winter plays guard. Jake Top plays tackle. Kyle Ungren plays tackle. Shane Fleck. Mason Rose, the center. Having big football games tonight. This is going to be Adi as he tries to sweep right and will be up near midfield and fall over midfield with good leg strength. Yeah, he's going to be really close to the first down, just a tough physical run by Adi. You see him do a little stutter step and cut inside, plants that right foot, oh. and cuts upside. And Got a good block from Darren Meyer that time. Yes, he did. He collided with Braden Henry and gave him some space to run just over the 50-yard line. They need to get to about the 48 for a first down. So this is second. You can do about anything you want on this play. Well, and that's the thing about the Marion local running backs. They are not one-dimensional. They run. They block. This is Partington gets a carry. Did he pick up the first down? He's been doing blocking back chores so far this evening. Is that going to be close enough to measure that one? Are we going to give it to him? Yeah, we're going to say he's a bit short. Well, Mark, I, I show on the stat sheets that we got from uh, Coach Goodwin that that's Partington's first carry. He doesn't have a carry this year. It's rewarding for all those blocking thing, schemes that you do. This is third and short. Same formation. Meyer. Meyer. And... Smash mouth football, a little big boy stuff. To the 45 now, picked up three plus. And the chains move again. And the clock does as well. This drive is now three minutes old. And they've gone from their own 28 to the 45 of Versailles. Adi is split to the right. Myers in the backfield. This is Laws in motion. He cuts inside and gets down to about the 40. Pick up of five on first down. Well, I like this play. It keeps the defense honest. You're focusing on Meyer, expecting him to get the football. They come with a little misdirection there. Inside handoff, basically a pass to Laws. And, and Meyer does another good job with his block right there. He get a kick out block to let Ross cut up inside of him. Second and five, this time from the Versailles 40. Partington's back in the game. Meyer runs behind him. Partington gets a good block, and this time Meyer goes down before he can get to the first down sticks. But he did get it to about the 37. So they're going to need two on third down. Yeah, and he just loses his footing there. Titus Garrett was in on the tackle. This is a big play for Versailles defense. It's third and about two, a long two. They, they need a stop yeah, here. Probably four down territory the way Coach Goodwin has played this game this evening. Meyer again, Partington gets a good block. Did he get to the, to the first down yard? I don't think he got there. No, they're a little short. It looks like the line judge is running yeah. in a little short of that 35 yard line, which they had to get to. Henry was in on the tackle along with a bunch of his teammates and they are just outside the 35 yard line. The 10th play of the drive and let's see if for sales gets a stop or if Marion Local continues on this time clock eating drive that they're on. This is play 10 of this drive. Well, Mark, I think this is a win-lose play here as far as for sales as it goes. They, they, they need a stop here. They need to stop in the worst way. Game is on the line right here. Meyer hit and falls forward. I think he's across. Yeah. 
He ran through the tackle of Lucas Stom, and Lucas did about all he could do right there, but Meyer gets that extra yard plus, and the football goes inside the 35 to the 34-yard line, first down. Another big play by the Marion local offense. Chains move, fresh set of downs, clock still ticking away, now down to almost six minutes. Hess, this time he's gonna set Meyer on his left hip. This law's in motion, this is Meyer. Burst forward, feet knocked out from underneath him by Peyton Platfoot, but not before he picked up significant yardage. Put those people up front knocking bodies out of the way. Yeah, puts him in excellent position too. Now they're second and one. Kind of opens the playbook. Maybe you try something here, look for a pass or something deep. I think Coach would be happy to just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. Well, I think so too, yeah. but I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if also. If you want to take one, here's the chance. Right. Yep. You got Adi out there in single coverage. Ball's in motion again. And runs through the first tackle, steps inside, and I think he's going to be a little bit short of the first down as Michael Osborne finally brings him down. Yeah, and technically that was a pass. <laughs> That's right, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> To help uh, Hess's percentage rate. Well, once again, we're very, very close to the first down sticks, and it's third down this time. The ball's on the 15. They need to get inside of that. Mark, I can't remember a game where there's been so many measurements, so many close, barely first downs, barely shorts. It's been a really tough contest. Meyer, first down yardage behind Partington in that big offensive line. Another Betty's Natural Foods first down. And that clock continues to tick away. Now we're down under four and a half. They've had the football for better than seven minutes. They've had some lengthy, lengthy drives this evening. Football's on the 22 yard line, or on the 12 yard line. I'm sorry, on the 22 yard line. Here's pitch to Adi, trying to get wide. Adi leans forward. Yeah, I think the Versailles crowd wanted yeah. to hold here on the defensive end by Partington. Looks like he may have, uh, it was close there, but it felt like he kept driving through him and it was a block. Good block. Second down, got a couple to the 20. Thinking Versailles may not see the football again. Meyer on Hess's right hip. This is Meyer. And he will fall forward again. Pyle usually goes forward when Darren Meyer carries the football. To the 19 yard line. They need to get to the 22, so they need to have about seven here, or lengthy six anyway. And I think you also got to keep your eye open for Nate Busher. He split out the last couple plays, and the uh, corners for Versailles are kind of pinching in because they're expecting run. Well, this is third down, Scott, but they are certainly in Carson Bills' range now, and with a six-point game, an extra three would make a difference. Adi this time behind Meyer. And what do we got? Timeout. This will be a timeout. Marion Local, first timeout of the second half. Our timeouts today are sponsored by Neecamp Farm Market. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Flats Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. And we're in the red zone. Our scoreboard tonight has been sponsored by Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. First timeout is Coach Goodwin's timeout. He's facing a third and six. On a drive that game began back on his own 28-yard line and is now down to the 19 of the Versailles Tigers. Well, he's got two options here. Is it, are we in four-down territory? Do we, do we try to get that seven yards in two plays? Or, uh, or is he thinking field goal? Well, we are 
they're about to find out the answer to that. Of course, he'll take uh, first down on one play if, if that happens as well. This is Laws goes in motion. And this is Meyer. No, Hess kept, kept it. Hess dives forward and gets down close to the 15-yard line. Carson Bills time. And what do we get this time? Now it's a Versailles timeout. Coach wants to save some time off the clock. Fourth down when we come back. You're watching high school football on WSN. That's our first for sales timeout here in the second half. Our timeouts are sponsored by Kneecamp Farm Market, your one-stop shop since 1998 on Route 127, eight miles south of Salina. For sales had to stop the clock, Scott. Here's what we're, we're standing right now with the Midwest Athletic Conference. Coldwater and Marion Local play in week 10. An interesting matchup. It probably has a lot of bearing on how the playoff situation goes as well as Conference championships. Yeah, familiar teams at the top. Yep. State ranked teams at the top. Right now, the concern is what is Coach Goodwin doing on fourth down? Looking to see if he sent in Carson Bills, who wears number 11. No, he's got Tate and Hess in he there. He did not. He's going to go for it. He's got Adi in the middle. He's got Drew Seitz in the back. But that's Seitz in motion. This is Adi going to run to his left. Adi steps inside, powers forward. Did he, he get it. to the first down, Sticks? I think he got just I'm enough. I'm looking to see what the end official says. First down, Versa uh, Marion Local. Meyer gets a good block. Meyer and Seitz both yes, opened up did. a hole. They really did a nice job there. Adi is the benefit, benefactor of it. So Marion Local gets a first down. The clock continues to run now down to... 2.15 and ticking. Betty's Natural Foods is your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. They have sponsored our first downs this evening and for sales just allowed Mary Local to pick up one of the big ones. And they can get a first down without Sights scoring. in motion again. This is Meyer. No? What do we have? False start. False start we do. It's going to take it from the 11 back to the 16. Clock. Very few flags tonight, I got to say. Um, the officiating crew has done a great job tonight. Uh, both teams have executed very well, but they've, uh, you know, they've called what they needed to, and and they've let these teams battle. Really good job, I think, by the this veteran crew. You can see the football setting on the 16-yard line. In the background, you see Al Hetrick field. Uh, house at the bottom, locker room facilities and so on. Wonderful coach and wonderful man here in the Versailles community. This is Adi on the direct snap. Adi turns the corner and did he get in? Looking for the call. He got in. Kyle Adi from 16 yards. Mark, this is the same play they ran the play before to get him the first down. The exact same play. They put Seitz in motion. Seitz and, and Meyer go out here and take care of business at the blocking. Adi's just got to run to the end zone, which he does almost untouched until about the two-yard line. 18 plays to go 72 yards. And they took uh, nine minutes and 55 seconds off the clock. It's 19-7. Wow. This brings in Carson Bills for the PAT attempt. That's ball control. Oh, my. His holder is Carter Jones. Jones PAT attempt, sails through. It goes to 20 for Marion Local, seven for Versailles. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's premier community sponsor for the Marion Local Fires is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing assembly needs, you can call OPAC. That was an 18 play, 72 yard drive, and it took 9.55 off the clock, leaving Versailles. Just a minute 52 and trailing by a pair of scores. And no real big plays in that drive. It was just a methodical three, four, or five yards per play moving down the field. You're exactly right. what you want from Marion Local. I, I see one play that picked up nine. Other than that, I, you are exactly right. Here's a dribble down. Picked up by one of the up guys. Let's see if we can get a number on that. There's number 80 who picked up the football, Levi Bargy. 
And now Connor Stonebreaker and crew will get the football on their own. Well, let's see where this crew puts it down at. Right at the 35, I think, 35, 36. Going yep, right at the 36-yard line. Down two scores, a lot of work to do. you got to score quick if you, if you want to have a chance here. Our Stonebreaker looking to the sideline for the play call from Coach Ryan Jones. Stonebreaker to throw. Little screen pass, little bubble screen set up. This is Connor. Look out. He's got some room. Osborne's got plenty of room to run. Up the sideline he goes before he's tackled over here by Nathan Busher. Just what they needed. Big completion on the bubble screen. Well, he's their big play guy. He's the, kind of the excitement in this offense. Every now and then you see really good block here by number two for, uh, for Versailles as well, Ethan Wilker. 36-yard pickup to the 28 of the Flyers. He does have some wheels, doesn't he? He does. Michael Osborne jets up the sideline. Well, before, that's what they needed. Yeah, before he gets knocked out of bounds. And it is first down now from the 28. Play clock. They just get it off. Stonebreaker to throw. Quick out. Caught on the sideline. Was that, I believe it is, Blackfoot it is. Have to wait till they get back into vision range with the sideline here. They've had two perfect plays, Mark. They're a big play run by Osborne. He got out of bounds, stopped the clock, and here they have another pass play, picks up the first down, gets out of bounds, clock stopped, minute 33. That's an 11-yard pickup to the 17. Sales wants to score, go onside kick. Trips to the right. Stonebreaker's gonna roll right under pressure, throws, and oh. picked off. He throw it into the hands of Carter Jones. Jones is running up the sideline and gets tackled and hustled out of bounds. The third INT tonight, that one by Carter Jones. Well, and credit Nick Ranley on this. I believe he's the one from Marion Local. Hits Stonebreaker right as he's throwing the football, and I think that, uh, that, that caused it to be short. And you see there, number three, yeah. Carter Jones with the pick in return. Also see Stonebreaker was having trouble getting off the field right there. They had to send a couple of medical staff out, and he did take a shot when he threw that one. 80 seconds to go. Flyers will get the football on their own 32-yard line. Well, that goes a long way for sealing the game for Marion Local, for sure. Myers, the up back, pitch to Adi as he goes left side. And Adi's got room to run, look out. Adi's got the Jets on and he is headed for the end zone. Big play, Kyle Adi. And they go 68 yards for a touchdown, Kyle Adi. The Flyers have taken a close game and broken it open here in the second half. Well, Adi's got speed, no question about it. Gets a few blocks and then he just turns on the Jets here. I mean, I'll tell you, Mark, uh, yeah. you know, this game is gonna be uh, reported, to, you know, 26, uh, 27 to seven, and, and you feel like Marion Local just rolled. Um, but this was a really close, really close, tight game until about the last minute and a half. Carson Bills, PAT, the guy who made the interception, Jones puts it down. That one sails through, it'll go to 27-7, and you are exactly right, Scott. This game was uh, seven up at halftime. It was 13-7. Since that time, the big 18 play drive, and then the interception, and then that touchdown run. We're going to take a break. You'll be back in just a moment. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back here at Whole Field at Versailles, where Mary Local has taken it to a 27-7 lead, with just 68 seconds remaining in the football game. That Mark, took all 12 seconds to run that play. Marion Local has the longest streak, allowing less than 40 points at 170. They're going to go to 171 tonight. How about that? Unbelievable. It is. And here's our computer points. This was coming into this evening in Division 6, Region 24. 
Scott, I try to follow Fantastic 50, and they rated for sales and Marion Local number two and number one in most difficult schedules in Division Six, Region 24. And why not? You're playing in the MAC every week. Just look, just look at what Marion Local's done this year. Wapakoneta has one loss, Marion Local. Okay, Macomb has one loss, Marion Local. You know, I mean, they, they just. For sales has had a really good season. They're going to be a tough out in the tournament. That ball's thrown over the middle. Is it complete? It is. The catch was made by uh, Colton Groff. And we got a flag that came in after that. And yeah, it might be rough in the passer. You see the quarterback, uh, they they limping a little bit there. I don't know if that's still from the previous play or not. Well, one, it is going to be. Yep. Yeah, uh, a penalty tacked on to that. But I'm, I'm certainly glad to see Connor Stonebracker back in the game. I, I didn't know how, what kind of shot he had taken on the sideline, but the completion plus the penalty. He just took another one, and he yeah. was uh, he, he got up sort of uh, gimpy and limping. This goes to the 44-yard line of the Flyers. That play took just the seven seconds. There's Stonebreaker. They go at him again, and they get tripped him up in the back line. Dar Darren Meyer gets the sack that time. Right back to about the 50-yard line. Take a look at it again. Well, they just keep coming, don't they? they? Do. Marion Local. It, it, yeah. Ramley was in there first. To the 50. Here's Stonebreaker's going to roll out this time. And step up and throw it deep. What a big arm that guy has. And he gets knocked away. Well, and he took another shot in traffic. He's a, I, I think he's a good quarterback, really good yeah. quarterback. That football was in the air for more than 50 yards, and he did it rolling to his left. Ball goes right back to midfield following that incompletion. You still have 32.3 seconds to go in this one. Third and 15. And this time... Michael Osborne goes to the quarterback position, and Stonebreaker becomes a wideout right in front of us. Blitz coming, and Osborne's got nowhere to go and gets snowed under. After the initial completion, two of the next three plays went sack. And let's see if that one will bring this game to an end or whether Versailles will choose to run one more play. Yeah, I don't think they are. It'd be a fourth down and a punt, maybe. Well, here comes Stonebreaker back into the, nope, he's going to keep going. I thought he was headed to the quarterback position. There will be one more play. Handoff and knocked down. That carry was by Titus Garrett. And Marion Local with a huge second half and multiple lengthy drives and some stellar defense this evening. We'll take a 27-7 Midwest Athletic Conference victory over the Versailles Tigers. Scott and I'll be back with a post game after this. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back in Versailles with our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. You can check out highlights of Stolly's Stolly Hustle Award winner on WSN YouTube page for highlights from tonight's game. And our highlight guy tonight, our Stolly Hustle Award winner, Jake Top. Jake, you guys went on three huge long drives, and you played a big role in that. Talk to me about the role you and your offensive linemen play doing this. Uh, we had to get low, make sure we moved them. That way get enough holes for a running back to get a play and get through there. Jake, um, what's it like? You're, you're up there knocking people down, and you've got uh, Meyer running behind you and, and Adi and so on. What's it like for you guys to be able to clear holes like that and watch those guys gain yards? It's pretty awesome because they're um, – he's defense player of the year, obviously. It's pretty awesome because he's good at running and – Yep. Well, Jake, you had some really fine plays defensively tonight. Tell me about the scheme you put together to put some pressure on Stonebrecker and, and take the game away from them defensively. Uh, coach always taught us some moves to use, so I always use them during the game, and that helped out tonight. All right, you're a senior. Looking forward to the last four games of your regular season, heading into the playoffs. you got to feel pretty good about where you and your teammates are right now heading into the rest of the season. Yep, feel good about it. All right, you got a lot of Mac games left to play. We'll look forward to get seeing you on the future. Jake Top, our Stally Hustle Award winner tonight. I want to thank Jake for being with us tonight. Bring Scott Nurse in with us. Scott, that's a really good effort tonight by that offensive line. 18-play uh, drive, 16-play, 18-play. They just they just rolled. Yeah, they they controlled the football. I was hoping uh, Jake would say something about that big hit he, hit, he yeah. had defensively. He he 
he had a couple big sticks defensively, but uh, nice job on the offensive line as well. But uh, yeah, part, that comes from those guys, the ball control. I mean, that's really the line executing when they needed to. For sales, will drop to a four and two on the season. They're two and two in conference play. Marion Local is going to go to six and zero oh and four and zero oh in conference play. And the way they're playing right now, Scott, both these teams.